This is Conrad Nagel inviting you to stay tuned for the next half hour for one of radio's outstanding dramatic productions on Proudly We Hail. Proudly We Hail. And now another Proudly We Hail one of radio's outstanding dramatic half-hours, transcribed coast-to-coast in cooperation with this station and presented by your Army and your Air Force. From Radio City, New York, here is your host and star on Proudly We Hail, the distinguished star of the theater, screen, radio, and television, Conrad Nagel. Thank you, Kenneth Banghart. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to Proudly We Hail. Adventures in the Middle East, eh, Conrad? That's right, Ken. Story of a strange adventure in the Syrian desert along the ancient caravan trail to Cathay. An interesting story and a very strange ending. Our first act curtain will rise in a few moments after this very important message. Here's a word about the vital job young women are doing in the United States Air Force. Women in the Air Force work on equal terms with the men, are doing interesting jobs. Jobs of vital importance in the support of the United States Air Force. How about you young women between the ages of 18 and 34? Can you qualify in the WAF? Stop in at your nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station for full details. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Wentworth, your Army and your Air Force present the proudly we hail production, Journey Eastward. Wentworth sought after adventure as the greedy man seeks gold. He sought it in strange schemes, outlandish enterprises in the known and little known corners of the earth. What he sought, he found with unerring accuracy. For to those with an eye and a heart for it, adventure is no will of the wisp. Like a patient friend, it awaits your call. Hold that into the map, Holly. Sure. There, there, now put those tacks in the corners. Hmm, I might have known. Syrian desert. From the Mediterranean to the Iranian border. I cut the rest off. It's of no use in this. Well, all right. What have you got in mind? This line running from Damascus to the lake at Habaniah and down the Tigris to Basra is the old caravan route. For thousands of years, this was the overland link between the east and the west. You see, trade was carried on by... <laughs> you don't have to lecture me, Wentworth. I've heard of the court of Kublai Khan and Marco Polo, too. <laughs> Well, would you care to join me in his footsteps? I've driven across all the deserts. Hey, who said anything about driving? You want to fly? What kind of an undertaking would that be, Holly? You don't think I came to Damascus and had you come all the way up from Cairo to propose a flight to Basra? (laughs) Doesn't seem likely, does it? I'll be quiet. Good. This is a journey of approximately 1,200 miles through country, as you well know, mean and rugged as any you can name. Once upon a time, it was done on camel and on foot. I'm planning to arrange a similar caravan of my own. Now, care to come along? (laughs) Hey, you don't let a man down, do you, Wentworth? A caravan to Basra, eh? How many camels? How many in it? Oh, say a dozen camels, a dozen men. Hey, gotten from where? Most people would think you're mad. Hmm, money is an excellent cure for madness. You remember Namara? Don't tell me that old cutthroat hasn't gone to paradise. (laughs) Oh, several times. But when they wouldn't let him in, he came back. He's arranging the details, getting the men. Uh, What kind of men? Uh, I'm not particular as long as they'll join me. Now, what about you? You think I'd miss this? Do we dress as the Bedouins of old? We do. Our only difference will be that we go well-armed. Some of the tribes out there aren't exactly friendly. When do we start? Well, not tonight. Effendi. Hmm? Namara, come in here. 
Well? It was not a simple task, Effendi. To find nine men, it took three days? No man on this earth could have done it in less. Yeah, especially if they spent two days in the cusp of drinking rookie. Oh, by Allah, I swear it is not so. Even gold would not tempt strong men in this venture. Your friends don't like the idea of walking to Basra? If I may speak as an unworthy one, they say any man who would make such a journey, especially at this time of the year, must have... Snakes in his head. Mm -hmm. But you finally found nine men willing to forget what they think for the clink of gold. Hmm? There are always such dogs to be found if one looks in uh, the... Where are they? In the courtyard, Effendi. Uh, what about camels? I have procured 12 of the best. Each one I examined carefully. You remember Effendi Holly? Like my palm. He goes with us. He will make you a good right arm. Mm -hmm. Well, let's have a look. Effendi is displeased. Namara, where in the name of Allah did you find these children of hell? They do not look pretty, but they will do as you say. Yeah. I've seen some rather rare specimens in my day, but these nine beauties top everything. What jail did you get them out of? But how did Effendi know that? You mean you'd... Oh, all right, Namara, let's have it. And no funny business. Well, I, I, I could find no one, not one brave man in all the city who would agree to go. I, I became desperate. I did not wish to fail you. One of my cousins is a keeper at the jail. I made a, an, an arrangement. I, I paid for the release of these, these men, and they in turn agreed to go with us. And just as soon as we get out of sight of the city, cut our throats. Oh, I swear by the beard of the prophet, they will behave offended. <laughs> Wait till Holly sees his traveling companions. Do they understand Arabic or any language? You know something? I think if you, Namara, and myself made this trek by ourselves, we'd have a much better chance of reaching Basra in one piece. You mean you don't think these nice, brave gentlemen are to be trusted? Joke all you want. They outnumber us three to one. You think because you got them out of jail, they'll do as you say once we're in the desert? If we persuade them. Well, during the day, maybe. With the three of us armed to the teeth. But what about the night? It will be dark and dangerous. <laughs> Have a little confidence in me, Holly. Well, actually, what do you need them for, anyway? You ought to know the answer to that. Protection, should we be attacked? Give them guns and they'll turn on you. I thought you enjoyed a bit of chance, Holly. Don't want to back out, do you? Well, you know better than that. All right, then. Climb aboard your rocking horse. You and Namara will hold down the rear. I'll lead. Namara! Huh? Let's get moving! Well, Holly, here's to a pleasant journey eastward. Namara! Holly! Don't let them straggle! Keep closed up! Ah, uh, another day. This infernal wind, doesn't it ever stop? They grumble much, Effendi, but it is to be expected of sons of jackals. We should be passing south of Saba Byron another day. We'll have to watch them carefully then. Namara. You think my speaking to them did any good? This unworthy one could not be a judge. They listen to your words, Effendi. I think it'll be better if two of us watch while the other sleeps. I think we're going to have some callers. Huh? Get over there with those bales, Holly. Quick. Namara, over there. Keep me covered. I'll handle this. Hold it. Hold it. Right there. Now, by Allah, what's the meaning of this? Well, speak up, you scum of the gutters. Effendi... To the north lies Sababar. We would go there and leave you in peace. You speak for all? It is so. And naturally you want camels. We are weary and would ride. And if I refuse you? This unworthy one would not deem it wise. Effendi. Be quiet, Namara. Now listen. When you were freed from prison where you all would have rotted out your miserable, misbegotten lives, you agreed to make this trip. The way is long. The wind is cruel. 
And we have changed our mind. You would break your word? We would go in peace. You mean in pieces. Look out, he's got a knife. Watch the others. I'll tend to this. All right. Now, this is my word. Mark it well, you off scouring to the devil. Obey me in what I say and what I do or die. That's your choice. Now, pick him up and get back to your fires before my wrath runs over. And I leave you all here to rot. <laughs> Country is getting more rugged. Yeah, sea of arid wasteland. Ugly, desolate. Dangerous. Limbo. <laughs> Glad you came along? Well, wouldn't have missed it for the world. Sometimes over the wind, I think I can hear the echoes of other caravans that pass this way. Tinkle of camel bells. Shouts of the riders. You're a romantic. <laughs> of course, you're not. And you have very good ears. Our charges seem to quiet it down. Perhaps they've become resigned to it all. Yeah, don't you believe it. They're just waiting for the right moment. Right now, they won't make a move because they'd be afraid of getting lost. But wait till we reach by our <laughs> arms. Have... Namara! Get into those rocks! Don't let them run! The beggars are up on that ridge line. Spread out! Spread out! Holly, Holly, return their fire. <laughs> I'd say we were in a bit of a mess. I'd have to agree. And yeah, they've got us nicely pinned down. Who are they? Who knows? We know they don't like us. We're waiting for nightfall, eh? Suppose so. Keep your head down, man. Yeah. There are us over there in those rocks with what's left of our traveling yes, companion. Yes, I know. As soon as it gets dark, we'll try to join forces. <laughs> Holly, look at that sky. It's getting awfully dark, but it's only 3 o'clock. I have a feeling our friends up there on the ridge have moved on. Just because they've grown quiet? Maybe that's what they want you to think. I said look at the sky. Ever been through a sandstorm? Namara! What do you make of it? Bad storm coming, Abendi. Holly, pull that thing up over your nose and come on. Uh, we got to try and get together before this thing hits. Well, what about the minute? They're not there, I tell you. It's getting so dark they couldn't see us anyway. Namara, we're coming over to you. Hold your fire. Holly, I grab hold of my belt. Quite look, like a big black tidal wave. Run, man, run. <coughs> we better get into those rocks. Can't stand up. Keep your head down. I think that... Look out for the ledge there. Quit, look out, you're going over. Quit, quit. <laughs> Conrad Nagel, starring in the role of Wentworth in the proudly beheld production, Journey Eastward, will return in just a moment for the second act. Here's a word to young women. Have you considered the opportunities that can be yours by enlisting in the WAF, the women in the Air Force? There are numerous chances for advancement in the United States Air Force. You're needed right now to do an important job in administration, in radio, in the medical service, or perhaps as an interpreter. There are hundreds of other interesting fields, too. So visit the United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station in your neighborhood to get all the details. Do it today. You are listening to Proudly We Hail. And now with your star, Conrad Nagel, in the role of Wentworth, we present the second act of Journey Eastward. Uh, what happened? Where am I? You must not try to rise. Lie still and rest. What? Well, who are you? How did I get here? Sleep, sleep. You are tired and hurt. We shall watch you well. Oh, there was a storm. They uh, took us by surprise. We, we... Sleep now. You will be stronger later. You... 
You must be the goddess Ishtar, and I must be dead. Or dreaming. Leave. <laughs> I just can't figure it out, Namara. Absolutely no trace of him at all. As though he vanished from the earth. But I was with him. I saw him fall. He went off that low ledge. That means he must have landed right about here. And if he wandered out there into the desert of Hendy... He wouldn't do that. How could he in that wind? Those who attacked us may have found him. It's the only answer. Where could they have taken him? I know not, Effendi. I only know we must leave this place and go to Birara. All these jackals will turn on us and leave our bones here. Namara, Wentworth was my friend. I just can't pick up and go because we've got a bunch of cutthroats waiting to turn on us. If you want to go, you go ahead. But I'm staying here to look for Wentworth as long as my water lasts. Tell the others they can go. Let them take the camels. Tell them if they're not on their way by sundown, I'll shoot the lot of them. Effendi, Wentworth was also my friend. I shall search with you, though I know the task will be fruitless. And the danger is great that those who attacked us will come again. Good. Maybe if they can come back, we can get them to take us to Wentworth. Allah is compassionate. Allah is wise. But if they return, it will not be to take us anywhere, but to kill us. You have eaten well? Oh, yes. Yes. Who are you? I am Thara. Thara. Was it your tribe that attacked us? Attacked you? That is strange talk for one who was taken from the jaws of death. Oh, thanks. Um, what happened to Holly and Damara? You are not of this land. What are you called? Uh, my name is Wentworth. What do you say we stop beating around the bush? Wentworth. That is an odd name. Hmm. I might say the same for you. What are you planning to do? Hold me for ransom? You are rude. We are protectors of the caravans. We hold no one for ransom. Protectors of the... <laughs> are you kidding I don't understand your speech. I admit my Persian's not so good and my Arabic is worse. Um, you don't speak English, do you? I have heard of the tongue, but I do not speak it. You are from far away place? Uh, America. I'm an American. Where is that? How would you say it? Uh, America? Uh, on the moon. Oh, that could not be... Are your people worshippers of Astarte? No. No, we play the Ouija board. I don't understand you. Well, look, maybe you can understand this. I'm grateful to you for being rescued. Last thing I remember before I woke up was falling off a ledge after the storm hit. Now, I want to know what happened to the others in my party. I want to get out of here and join them. We know nothing of the rest of your caravan. They must have perished in the storm. We found only you and brought you to our encampment. Now, I think you better rest. Is... is my leg broken? Yes, but Agalia has joined it, and it will grow strong again. When the next caravan comes, we shall send you on your way. Well, as we say on the moon in America, sweetheart, you take the cake. <laughs> been here. I have not marked the days. You know, there's something, something dreamlike about this whole thing. This place doesn't seem real. And you don't either. <laughs> I am real. Wentworth of the strange town. And yeah, that's another thing. Your way of talking is archaic. Sometimes it's difficult to understand what you're saying. And another thing, What's a girl like you doing out in the middle of nowhere? Doesn't your tribe ever move? Move? Why should we move? 
When the caravans pass, we see to their needs. Caravans? What caravans, Sarah? No caravans pass here. When you fell, you must have hurt your head also. When my father returns... Your father? Will... Is he the leader of this tribe? He is Shadu, the leader of the encampment. And in his absence, I have taken his place. Oh. Where is he? Out arranging for my ransom? You should not speak so. Why do you hurt me with your sharp words? They are like barbs. He is in Babylonia to see... Why, he is where? I shall not speak with you if you shout at me. Oh, now, look, Tara. This encampment, this watering hole. What do you call it? Guardia. 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 <laughs> I've never heard of it. it. Wasn't marked on my map. Then you had a poor map. Every traveler east or west knows of Guardia. Hmm, you don't say. Well, when do you expect your father from... Babylonia. Soon. I know not when. Yes, I know, I know. On the next caravan west. Hmm? Perhaps. And now I must bid you good night. Sleep well, strange man from the moon. <laughs> Wentworth, old man, I think it's time you got out of here before you go stark raving mad or one of these fine people gets tired of waiting for Papa and cuts your throat. <clears> there. <throat> yeah. Easy does it now. <sighs> the water bags are filled. This steak will have to do for a cane. Not going to be a pleasant walk. I'll head south for the pipeline. So... Farewell, Thar of Guardia. Sorry I couldn't stay around and listen to more of your beautiful double talk. Now, Wentworth, start walking. <laughs> Namara, wait. Effendi, Effendi Halley. Namara, they found him. What? He's alive. He's a live man. Of whom does the Effendi speak? Wentworth. He stumbled in out of the desert, one of the pumping stations on the pipeline. They're sending a plane out to fly him back here to Damascus right away. Allah is merciful. Allah is good. A miracle. Harley, will you stop walking up and down like an expectant father? Sorry. Look, I don't care how far-fetched it may sound to you, that's the story. I can all say I'm out of my head, but it's true. It's fantastic. Yeah. Well, the way I have it figured out, they were the bunch that jumped us. But no one approached the authorities for your ransom. Well, maybe something happened to them. But I don't know. You said she called the place Guardia? That's right. And as soon as I'm able to get up and around, I'm going back there and take her over my knee. Holly, she was a knockout. <laughs> and smart, too. I can imagine. Look, you seem to doubt my story. No. No, how could I? Well, that's what I want to know. The x-ray showed my leg had been broken in two places. Now, you don't think I said it myself. And then wandered around out there for two months while it got better. Of course not. Well, then, what's eating you? In your pocket, there was a bracelet. Yeah, that's right. I wanted something to remember her by. Well, what about it? You know how interested I am in things like that. So when you let me take it, I took it to a friend of mine who's an authority on the history of this area. Well, I don't follow you. Why? It had an unusual design. Never seen one like it before. Thought it might be valuable. And was it? Wentworth, he nearly had a stroke. He said it was priceless. Over a thousand years old. Well, she was priceless, too. <laughs> but I don't, think, I don't think she was quite that old. Well, that bracelet was probably handed down or stolen or something. He wanted to know where I'd gotten it. I told him. Do you know what he told me? Sure, he'd pay anything for it. He told me that Guardia had been a watering hole for the caravans. A thousand years ago. All of them stopped there. Very famous place in its day. Holly, 
What are you trying to say? I'm not trying to say anything. I'm just telling you what he told me. The inscription on the bracelet. You couldn't translate it, could you? No. No, I couldn't make it out. Well, he could. It was written in ancient Persian. It said, Thara, beloved of my heart. And then there was another name he couldn't quite make out. Something like Ardu or... Uh... Shardu? Holly. That was her father's name. I... I just wanted you to know. Yeah. Thanks. Thara Guardia. A thousand years ago. Well... You tell me the answer, Holly. You tell me. Our star, Conrad Nagel, will return in just a moment with a word about next week's show. Who's the smartest woman of the year? Why, the woman who puts on that new blue uniform of the United States Air Force. Smartly tailored, neatly groomed, she's being seen more and more around the nation these days. She's smart in another way, too. She started a great career as a WAF, one of the women in the Air Force working side by side with the men of the Air Force. She wears her Air Force blue proudly, with a sense of personal accomplishment, because she's doing a needed job in administration, in radio as a technician or operator in the medical service as a technician, or in hundreds of other interesting fields. More and more young women, 18 to 34, are finding out that the smart thing to do is to get the complete details at the nearest United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station to put on the smart blue uniform worn by the women in the Air Force. How about you? Can you qualify? <laughs> This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station by the United States Army and the United States Air Force Recruiting Service. Proudly We Hail stars Conrad Nagel. This is Kenneth Banghart speaking, and here again is your host and star, Conrad Nagel. Friends, may we take this opportunity to wish all of you in the audience a hearty, happy new year and extend to you all our best wishes for 1952. We hope you'll join us for the coming year for Proudly We Hail over the same station. Our program next week is a strange tale of a strange adventure entitled A Matter of Time. Until then, goodbye. Goodbye.